Uh, thank you, Dr. Junko, for that introduction. And thanks to the organizers for asking me to speak today. How do I flick the slides? Just, do you know? Okay, sorry, just wanted to clarify that. Um, so, uh, so th once again, thank you for the organizers for allowing me to speak today. I have, I'm very passionate about this topic, almost as much as Nick Payton, and, and so it gives me the platform to be able to extend that passion on, on where I'm speaking from now. So the outline of my talk today is um, I'm going to briefly talk about the WHO guidelines of second-line antiretroviral therapy, the role of nucleosides uh, both in PI-based second-line art and integrase-based second-line art, and then I'm really going to touch very briefly on switching uh, PI-based second-line art to integrase inhibitors in virally suppressed patients in the setting of NRTI resistance. So WHO guidelines since 2019 have recommended uh, the use of dolotegra in combination with an optimized nucleoside backbone since 2019. Uh, so much so that if you started with a, uh, a tenofovir and amtricitabine uh, based regimen combined with an NNRTI-based regimen, the recommendation was always to switch the nucleoside backbone to AZT and 3TC in line with uh, predicted resistance uh, on resistance testing. And this has remained till today. And this is some specific recommendations around switching the NRTI backbone in the WHO guidelines, which were recently updated in 2021, and the specific text around this. So using dolotegravir in combination with an optimized NRTI backbone is preferable and recommended as good practice. Uh, AZT in 3TC should be used as the NRTI backbone in a second-line regimen if tenofovir in 3TC or FTC was used in the failing first-line regimen and vice versa. But you have this special case of M184V, and I think if we're going to talk about resistance, you need to speak very, uh, you need to touch on what, what's so special about M184V. Well, it's the most common NRTI mutation. It emerges very rapidly in non-suppressive regimens containing 3TCFTC. On resistance testing is associated with very high level phenotypic resistance, which doesn't translate into clinical outcomes of more than a hundred fold. And clinical studies that show that if you continue to use 3TC, it is okay because it continues to exert significant antiviral activity despite the loss of phenotypic activity, which is reported on resistance tests. And is associated with a reduction in viral fitness by at least 50% and increases susceptibility to AZT and TDF. And then you have the K65R, which is the signature tenofovir mutation. It reduces tenofovir susceptibility in vitro by twofold. Uh, it confers broad resistance to all NRTIs, including tenofovir, bacovir, 3 tc FTC, but increased susceptibility to AZT. The early evidence of continued NRTI activity in the setting of NRTI resist in the setting of NRTI resistance was shown as early as 2006, where patients who had evidence of 3TC resistance with 184V, in this study it showed that if you continue 3TC monotherapy versus stopping all antiretroviral therapy, 3TC monotherapy continued to maintain HIV viral loads. Uh, and CD4 counts higher than stopping all antiretroviral therapy. So switching themes to uh, the use of PIs and NRTIs in second-line therapy. And one of, the, one of the most important studies addressing this was, of course, the ERNA study, which looked at failure of uh, patients on first-line NNRTI-based regimens who were randomized to two or three NRTIs and a PI uh, versus a nucleoside-sparing arm of PI and roltegravir and the third arm being a PI monotherapy, and they were followed up for a period of 144 weeks. And what essentially this study showed is summarized in this slide. Uh, this, the, the, the line on the top showed uh, those who were randomized to PI with no active NRTIs, and what you can see essentially that, um, that the, the arm with the inactive NRTIs did as well as combining the PI with a completely new class of drug. In this case, it was roltegravir. 
And as you go down the slide, the greater the activity of NRTIs combined with the PIs, you had this paradoxical relationship. So if they had higher activity based on resistance testing, where you would expect higher virological success, in fact, the other, it, it, it happened the other way. There was greater virological failure. And this was likely explained by uh, adherence, which continued on, poor adherence, which continued on second-line antiretroviral therapy. Needless to say, the two NRTIs and the PI arm did better than the boosted PI monotherapy arm, even in those without active NRTIs, which essentially showed that NRTIs contributed to activity despite the fact that they, they did not have any uh, reported activity on resistance testing. And the question is whether NRTIs maintain this activity in the setting when they're combined with second generation integrase inhibitors, as they've been shown with protease inhibitors. Other second-line randomized control trials looking at uh, PIs combined with a new class of drug, such as Roltegavir, compared to two NRTIs and PIs, which was the standard arm, also showed that recycled nucleosides combined with a higher genetic barrier drug, such as boosted PIs, work as well if you replace the two NRTIs with a fully active drug, such as Roltegavir. And this was shown in the second-line study and the select studies. Now, moving on to where we are now, which is the use of integrase um, inhibitors and NRTIs in second-line therapy. So the Dawning study was one of the first studies to show uh, efficacy of dolotegravir above and beyond a calitra in second-line regimens. However, the problem with the Dawning study was that there was a prerequisite beforehand that you needed at least one fully active NRTI based on resistant testing at baseline, which did not reflect the public health approach. And secondly, there was an early DSMB review at 24 weeks, which showed superiority of Kaletra, and therefore it allowed discontinuation um, of patients on Kaletra and allowed them to cross over to the dolotegravir arm. And it didn't answer the question whether you could recycle the nucleosides, uh, particularly TDF and 3TC in second-line regimens when combined with dolotegravir. But it did show superiority of dolotegravir over Kaletra, which was maintained at 48 weeks, where the primary endpoint was virological response at 48 weeks. And this was despite uh, um, the level of baseline resistance to the nucleosides. But of course, you can't talk about this talk without um, mentioning the NADIA trial, which is probably one of the more important antiretroviral therapy uh, trials of the uh, decade. And this looking once again at patients who failed first-line NNRTI-based treatment with a standardized regimen of TDF3TC NNRTI. And they were randomized in a two-by-two -two randomization, first to dolotegravir and then darunavir, and then, and then subsequently again to tenofovir and AZT in each of those arms. 464 patients in Africa, of note, six, uh, 50% uh, of patients had a CD4 count of 200 and high levels of baseline resistance, 50% to K65R uh, or N and 86% to 184V. And the patients were followed up for a period of, uh, that the primary endpoint was virological response at 96 weeks. So looking at the direct comparisons between dolotegravir and darunavir, dolotegravir was found to be non-inferior to darunavir, uh, when you use the endpoint of viral load suppression below 400 copies per mil. But this did not show superiority of dolotegravir compared to darunavir. So unlike the Dawning study, which showed that dolotegravir was superior to uh, uh, lapinavir, ritonavir, this was shown that it was non-inferior, at least equivalent, and similar rates of virological rebound. But what it did show was that in second-line art, dolotegravir had this had a bit of vulnerability compared to darunavir. So because there was emergent notable resistance in, in about nine out of 235 patients, so 4%, but in patients who failed with dolotegravir resistance. But, this, but there were no rates of resistance in the darunavir arm. When you looked at across uh, subgroup analysis, uh, patients uh, did equally well across both arms. Um, irrespective, and even in the arm 
where you'd expect that um, uh, they not to do so well. So for example, in the arm which uh, had less active uh, NRTIs, the proportion of patients that achieved viral suppression above 90% was still very high, in the, even in the absence of any NRTI activity. With Tenofovir and AZ, AZT, and this is, was the second question posed in Nadia, was that recycling of nucleosides, the Tenofovir and 3TC arm, was superior to switching to AZT, so 92% versus 85%. Um, and fewer patients, when you looked at viral rebound, on Tenofovir 3TC had viral rebound than AZT and 3TC. Now, looking at subgroup analysis, particularly around resistance patterns and K65R and levels of resistance to tenofovir and AZT, we find that tenofovir still achieves higher viral suppression rates than AZT. And yeah, so, so really some of the conclusions is that dolutegravir maintains this viral suppression at 96 weeks, but there are concerns around dolutegravir resistance when used in second line. Uh, so it's not without that degree of vulnerability. However, darunavir, ritonavir can be used or should be equivalently placed to dolutegravir and two NRTIs in second line above and beyond other PIs and without the risk of resistance. And just to quote the words of a wise man, switching to zidovudine in second line belongs in the dustbin of history. WHO needs to revise their guidelines pronto. Just moving on with some other randomized control trials, and I'll go through this very quickly. This was Vicent's study, which was a 144-week randomized open-label non-inferiority phase three study done in Zambia. And if we just concentrate on the viremic arm with, with the HIV viral load more than 1,000, similar group of patients failing NNRTI-based treatment. And the questions that were raised here is, can we use uh, TDF, uh, 3TC, and TAF, and is one nucleoside backbone there superior to the other? And is that regimen superior to the WHO, previously WHO recommended regimen of changing the nucleosides to AZT3TC and, and using either Kalitra or Atazanavir? The initial results at 48 weeks, which were presented at Croin, this is just concentrating on the viral loads greater than 100, which is the viremic arm, essentially showed that TEF, FTC, or tenofovir, and trethicine, and dolotegravir uh, were superior to the combined, so they combined the, the, the lipinavir ritonavir arm and the ritonavir atazenavir arm, so that was superior to the combined PI arms with uh, the WHO recommended algorithm of switching nucleosides to AZT3TC. So once again, supporting uh, recycling of nucleosides with dolotegravir, uh, sorry, with TDF3TC when combined with dolotegravir. And there was no difference in suppression rates in the dolotegravir arm when they looked at baseline uh, NRTI mutations. And this was reported at CROI uh, in 2023. Finally, the D2FT study, um, which was a very long study, it started in 2017, was, uh, and it was based on the earlier second line study, it was originally designed as a two-arm comparator arm, comparing two NRTIs and the PI class, or the choice at the moment, which is ritonavir and darunavir, compared to a nucleoside-sparing arm of darunavir, ritonavir, and dolotegravir. Um, owing to the HIV-evolving treatment landscape, a third arm was added, consisting of a fixed-dose combination of TDF, FTC, uh, or, or 3TC, and dolotegravir in May 2018. Similar group of patients failing NNRTI baseline ART. They were randomized either to the standard of care of two NRTIs and darunavir ritonavir. In this case, the NRTIs were selected by genotyping or WHO algorithm, depending on what was the capacity at the site or nucleoside sparing arm of darunavir and dolotegravir, where genotyping was not required. And subsequently, uh, the third arm was added, which was a fixed dose combination. Of note, um, there were 82% of patients on efavirenz at first line failure. And uh, of the patients who were randomized to the two NRTIs and the standard of care arm, 76% were on AZT. So there were high numbers on AZT and 19% on TDF and 3TC. Baseline characteristics are as of note, and what was good about this study is that there were higher numbers of patients who were recruited uh, 
from uh, Africa as well as the Asian region, with a median CD4 cell count of 206. The st what, what essentially showed is that the two arms, uh, the dolotegravir and the runavir ritonavir, and the fixed dose combination of arm of TDF, 3TC, and dolotegravir was non-inferior to the standard of care arm. But what it did also show was that for the first time, the nucleoside-sparing arm of dolotegravir and darunavir was superior to NRTIs and, 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 and uh, darunavir ritonavir. Well, but whether this can be scaled up largely depends at the moment uh, on, on the accessibility and the cost, uh, which tends to favor uh, TLD. Now, I was hoping to present some data on baseline and emergent uh, resistance, which would fit very nicely with this talk. However, we haven't been cleared to do so, unfortunately. Finally, and just really for the last couple of minutes, uh, I'm going to touch very briefly on virological uh, suppression. Uh, so switching from PI-based second-line ARC to integrase inhibitors in the setting of virological suppression. Now, a lot of us have been burnt very early on and have been very cautious with uh, treatment switches, and this was largely due to the earliest switch mark study, which essentially showed that if you switched from a drug with a higher genetic barrier to resistance to a lower genetic barrier resistance, um, there was concerns around potential um, of, um, virological failure in the setting of NRTI resistance. And so what, what, what it taught us is that it was, it, it was risky to switch suppressed patients from their higher resistance barrier regimen of Kaletra or lapinavir, ritonavir plus NRTIs to roltegravir if they harbor NRTI-resistant virus. And this has remained a caution amongst a lot of ID physicians uh, regionally and globally. So one of the first studies to look at um, switching patients from, who are virally suppressed from a high genetic barrier drug such as uh, um, ritonavir and uh, ritonavir lapinavir to a drug such as dolotegravir was a 2SD study. Um, this was a study which was done in Kenya. Uh, patients were virally suppressed on PI-based second-line art with two NRTIs for more than 24 weeks, and they were virally suppressed for more than 12 weeks with no prior integrase exposure. So the key there was no prior integrase exposure. Um, the, the other, the other um, caveat also was that no resistance testing was done, but the ARV resistance was unknown, but assumed that the baseline resistance data um, although not collected, uh, from previous second-line studies done across the region was assumed to be high, particularly in patients in sub-Saharan Africa uh, who were maintained on second-line PI-based therapy. Uh, they were randomized to either continue their current antiretroviral regimen or switch to two NRTIs in dolotegravir. Um, the, primary, um, viral load, the primary endpoint was the proportion of patients who had a viral load greater than 50 um, by the FDA snapshot analysis at 48 weeks. Baseline characteristics were similar across both arms. Most patients were on atazanavir, ritonavir, and 50% of patients were on tenofovir and 3TC, and the remainder were on AZT and 3TC. And essentially, virological outcomes at week 48 essentially were very similar, whether you looked at it at the proportion of patients who had a viral load greater than 50, so about 5% in each arm, or rates of viral suppression of less than 50 at 48, 48 weeks, so 90% in both arms. Uh, so really non-inferior. Dolotegravir was non-inferior to PI ritonavir, to, to, to the protease inhibitors. And, in, and also to note that participants who did develop virological failure did not have detectable genotypic resistance, either to dolotegravir as well as um, uh, the PIs at the time of failure. And the deduction essentially was that you can safely switch virally suppressed patients on second-line PI-based art to dolotegravir without knowledge of prior resistance. And this, is, this really changes a lot of what we're doing in terms of HIV management. So what do the other guidelines say? And I'm not going through all the guidelines, but I always look to the South African guidelines because they, they have the largest ART programs um, and um, uh, they are... Uh, you know, they're a bit more progressive in terms of, 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 of coming up with guidelines. And what, what I just wanted to highlight, although WHO haven't really um, committed to changing guidelines at the moment, but I understand that they're going to, these are some uh, 
guidance from um, uh, South African guidelines. So switching TLD from a first-line regimen containing efavirenz and nevirapine, so all patients on tenofovir, lamivudin, efavirenz and nevirapine can switch to TLD regardless of viral load, whether they're suppressed or unsuppressed, okay? Secondly, switching to dolotegravir from a second-line base, second-line boosted PI containing regimen. Uh, if you're on a PI-based regimen, and if you're virally suppressed, you can switch to TLD, regardless of prior resistance patterns or treatment history. However, if you have a detectable viral load, uh, the, the recommendation there is to, um, is to investigate that first. So I'm coming to my conclusion, uh, and this is my last slide. So in conclusion, 2-NRTIs in dolotegravir is, has been associated with durable suppression uh, in second line, even if NRTIs have no predicted activity. So once again, supporting the recycling of nucleosides. However, emergent dolotegravir resistance is a concern when used in second line, which has not been shown in patients on first line therapy. And recycling of nucleosides despite underlying NITRI resistance is not just equivalent, but superior to switching to AZT3TC if the third drug has a high genetic barrier to resistance, so either dolotegravir or darunavir. And it is safe to switch uh, virally suppressed patients in second-line PI-based art to dolotegravir without knowledge of prior resistance. With that, I've got 41, oh no, I'm over time by 43 seconds. Thank you very much.